what are some actions that could prolong your VA disability compensation claim? In today's video, I'm going to share with you some of these things that I used to see as a prior VA rating specialist, so stick around. Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Dwayne Kimball, owner and founder of KMD89 VA Claims Consulting, United States Army veteran and retired VA rating specialist. In today's video, I'm going to discuss and share with you some things that I used to see as a VA rating specialist that prolong veterans' disability compensation claims. But before I get into today's video, make sure you go out and pick up my new book, VA Claim Success. Click on the link in the description section so you can pick up your copy. Now, today's video. What are some things that I used to see that prolonged veterans' VA claims? Now, as I go through these, I'm going to say this before I even start. This is your claim. You have to do what you feel is right for your claim. This video, I'm only sharing some things that I used to see that prolonged veterans' claims. Now, you possibly could do some of these things and they may not prolong it as long or as much, okay? It could be, uh, could get adjudicated a little bit faster. But these are some things that <laughs> I used to see that would push that decision, um, adjudicating that claim out a few months, okay? So, Number one, long and unclear statements. In March 2015, the, vet, uh, the VA decided to come out with prescribed claim forms. And I, you know, a lot of raiders, including myself, was happy because sometimes veterans would send in 5, 10, 15, 20 pages, like an essay of explanations of things that they were claiming. Now, sometimes RVSRs could get confused and say, okay, that may be claiming five or six things. Another RBS will look at it and say, no, nah, I think they're claiming three or four things. Then somebody else look at it and say, no, they're claiming about 10 different things. So at that point, a letter would be sent to the veteran to say, hey, we're unclear on what you're claiming. Please specify each individual condition that you're claiming. Now, when that happens, when they send that back, to the veteran and ask for clarification, your claim is on hold for 30 days. And the veteran should, they're requesting that the veteran respond within 30 days. You respond within 30 days, it doesn't mean on that 31st day they're going to look at it. There could be 30, 40, 50 days, and hopefully that veteran did explain each individual condition, okay? So just keep in mind, you have humans looking at this, okay? And it could be very confusing. So one of the things I did, short, direct, and to the point, and that's what these prescribed claim forms that the VA came out in March 2015 helps the veteran do. Keep, stay on task, short, direct, and to the point. Number two, requesting the VA go out and get private medical evidence. Now, on the VA form 21-526CZ, it's on the screen right now, section 17 is asking, hey, if you had any treatment at a VA medical center, DOD, medical records, private facility, uh, and so forth, okay? It's asking, enter the, uh, the disability, uh, treated, name, location, date of treatment, check the box, um, check the box if you do not have dates of the treatment. Now, when you put that information in there, one, if it's from a VA medical center and it's after 2005, the rater has access and they can look at that. Okay? If it's from a vet center, then they will go out to that vet center because raters don't have access to it. All right? If it's from a private doctor, same thing, but in any case, besides 
it being at a VA medical center, they're going to send you a VA form 21-4142 release of medical information, okay? Because they just can't go out and get their records, get those, obtain those private records without your permission. So when they send you that form to sign, complete and sign, claim is on hold for 30 days. You send it back in, somebody may not look at it to complete the development for maybe 35, 45, or maybe 60 days. Okay, so now we're already at two months. Then when they send that to their private doctor's office or vet center, it's on hold for another 30 days. Okay, now what if the vet center or the private doctor don't respond in that 30 days? Well, it may go 35, 45 days, 60 days before the system triggers somebody to do development. They get it. And they said, oh, we didn't get a response. So then what they're going to do is send you a letter and put the claim on hold for another 30 days. And in that letter, they're going to say, we didn't receive a response. It is your ultimate responsibility to get this information. So <laughs> what is the corrective action on this? You can go out and get the medical records yourself and submit it with your claim that will help move your claim or should help move your claim to the next stage if there's private medical evidence. But keep in mind, if you want the VA to do it, they have a duty to assist to do it. If you ask them, you put that information um, in box 17 on the 526CZ, just know that's going to prolong your claim. Okay. Now, submitting incomplete DBQs. This has been a DBQs and nexus statements. This has been a huge controversy amongst private veterans that get DBQs and nexus statements from a private physician. Now, a lot of the employees are refusing to use these. I can only speculate, but I don't have a definite answer. So as a veteran, you have to make sure if you decide to go out and have a private physician or a private uh, mental health professional to complete a DBQ and or nexus statement, you have to make sure that it is complete and sufficient for rating purposes. Now, my team and I, what we've been seeing, a lot of veterans that do get their DBQs reviewed and ensure that they are sufficient. Some VA employees are just refusing to use it and schedule a CMP exam when they don't have to. Now, that happens. I believe that your chances of winning that on a high level review are a lot higher than if it's not complete, okay? Because the M21 gives the rater examples of when information is incomplete, okay? But 10 times out of 10, they're just gonna go ahead and schedule a CMP exam. They're not gonna do any of those other uh, criteria or examples in the M21 that it gives them the capability to do, okay? Now, another one, missing a CMP exam. I understand life happens, things come up, but if you have to miss a CMP exam because maybe you went to hospital, you got sick, you're in the hospital, you got sick, or whatever, Call the VA and let them know that so they can reschedule that exam. So once you get that exam scheduled, contact the third-party examiner or the VA CMP office, wherever they schedule that CMP exam, say, hey, I can't attend, got to go to the funeral. I'm in the hospital. Please reschedule my exam. Even if they deny it because you missed the exam, is something on record stating that you called in and said, hey, I need this exam rescheduled. So at that point, only thing you have to do is let them know, hey, I missed the exam. I called in on this particular date because you kept notes, and I want you to go ahead and reschedule my exam, and they're supposed to go ahead and reschedule it. Now, that will prolong the claim because, or the decision for that claim because if they do a rating, then you have to go back and request that they schedule that CMP exam. That could be two or three months depending on your personal situation, okay? Now, last but not least, 
you the veteran continue to send in evidence you continue to send in evidence every two weeks you send in some men two weeks after that you send in some men now the reason why this could prolong your claim is because the VSR or the RVSR may have to do development. And sometimes that may take time. They may have to go out and get uh, additional medical evidence from a private provider that we talked about earlier, which would, they would need your permission to do that. Or they may have some other type of development or which you submitted could be incomplete, the evidence, okay? So these are some things that I used to see that cause veterans claims to get prolonged. Now, I'm not saying not to do any of these things because this is your claim. What I'm merely saying, just keep in mind, if you fall into any of these categories, don't be surprised if your claim is prolonged by a few months. Okay, what I mean by a few months, maybe six or seven, depending on which one of these things that you did. Okay, I'm just merely bringing awareness to it. Now, this is your claim. You have to make the decision what you're going to do. But at the end of the day, just keep in mind, if I do this, this could happen. Okay. And with that being said, make sure you like, subscribe, hit that notification button, and don't forget to share this video with your fellow veterans. Thank you.